Welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for conver it's time for conversations. I uh, was looking for some money so that I could go shopping. I don't know about you guys, but some of us. That is the current situation when we look into our wallets and our bank accounts. So I'm gonna be talking to an incredible coach who is going to help us figure out whether there's any way to get our money right during this pandemic. Let's go meet her. So I'm super excited to introduce Irene Moravi. She is the founder at the Personal Development Institute, but she is also a life coach. You know, if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, which is not being a CEO. Hi, Irene, how are you? I'm very well, Susan. How are you? I'm good. You look lovely. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on to KTN Life and Style. We're super excited for all the wisdom that you're about to drop. <laughs> Thank you for hosting me, and you look lovely as always. Thank you. So today we are talking about money. And we're talking about how it relates to our mindset. And Irene, I'm hoping that you can help us stay sane. With all our money woes and COVID-19 right. and everything, it's really hard to organize all of that in our minds. So I'm super excited for you guys, for you to lead us on this journey. But before we get there, um, how have you been doing? Well, it's a new normal for all of us, and especially those of us who are used to working from boardrooms and, uh, you know, <laughs> training and all that. But it's also just been, well, a time to sit back and reflect on many things. I think uh, we thank God that we are still here. Uh, you know, the majority of us as Kenyans are still here. For that, we are thankful. And um, it's been an amazing time because for me, Susan, I'm actually having to tell people, and some of those who are close to me know that, that it's been a season of thriving. Mm. And I know globally it's been a very tough time. Yes. But I was able to quickly adjust from the traditional classes that I have, we have run at Personal Development Institute for 10 years. Okay. And immediately we put our courses online. Guess what? The world opened up to us. We got wow. Kenyans in the diaspora cleaning up. <laughs> Business has been great. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah, I also think it's because people now working from home and slow down schedules were able now to take the time to consider their personal development. Because some would have loved to, but always very busy schedules, as you know. So I guess part of the reason why people are also signing up is because they had this, you know, free time in their hands. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm excited because we will be talking about those ones who are too busy and now can find the time and the ones that have the time aren't too busy. Um, but before we get there, we are talking about a positive mindset, but more about a positive money mindset. And what I would want to understand is, what's your definition of somebody having a positive money mindset? A positive money mindset basically means that your mindset is one geared towards wealth creation and having an abundance mindset, knowing that this money may not be in your bank account, but mm -hmm. there's an abundance of money. Mm -hmm. Because just like there's an abundance of water in the ocean, there's an abundance of the air we breathe, you know, all the natural resources that are there, Susan, are available in abundance. We can't even exhaust them. That's right. So the beginning of a, the, the beginning of a positive mind, money mindset is to know that the world revolves around abundance and not scarcity. Mm. And you'll bear me witness that um, listening to our president, listening to other presidents like President Trump, even during this COVID season, they kept talking about billions of dollars or billions of shillings. So the fact that COVID is here hasn't affected that there was so much money in circulation. It has affected business flows and cash flows, and especially you know for very small businesses. But yeah. the reality is that there is still a lot of money available globally. If you looked at the figures of the the amount of money that was being given to us as a nation from IMF, World Bank. I mean, there's no scarcity. It is in the millions. 
That's true. There is, there are enough funds dollars. to be able, yeah, it's in dollars and there's enough funds, like you said, to be able for us to plan ourselves for at least quite a period of time. When people come to you for your services and majority of the time, when you have patients or clients who are complaining about money woes and money issues, what's usually the first thing you will tell that patient? When we look at them as clients, because for coaching, we don't consider them as patients because they come when they are yeah. functional, <laughs> right? Uh, and the first thing we do is just to find out where are they at, you know, in both in terms of general mindset, but also money mindset. Because in the 10 years that I've run Personal Development Institute, the majority of the clients, when they walk in, the first thing is not money. The first thing they want is clarity of life's purpose. And there is a way that clarity is tied now to their money story. Maybe just to recap, Susan, I'm sure that you know I worked in the banking industry for 10 years mm -hmm. before I resigned at 33 to set up Personal Development Institute. Right. So I guess having been in the bank and having been a teller, you know, in operations, you see a lot of money both in cash and electronic money. Yes. They probably gave me the advantage of knowing that money is in plenty. <laughs> but so when clients come, our first conversation is for most of them, it's um, they want clarity of their life's purpose. And that's where the, you know, the conversations begin. Because then yeah. we have those who come and say, I have the corner office. I'm an executive. Money is not the problem. But is this all there is to life? Mm -hmm. Then on the other hand, you get a mamamboga because I've had I'm an executive and I've had mamambogas, you know, who come and say, Irene, I am tired of hustling. Is yeah. this all there is? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I like that. And we'll circle back to that because the, the two examples you've given of somebody who is hustling day to day, some of them now, even the high income earners are living hand to mouth like the person that would now be like the mama boga. So now what's happened with COVID-19 right. is we have a lot of people who are in that situation of living hand to mouth and they aren't quite sure what to do. So for yeah. somebody who has had to make a huge adjustment in life, money wise, what advice would you give them when it comes to having that positive? I think we all have to start at the place of reflection. We have to reflect because for some of us who have, even in business, I mean, a lot of cash flow, which then at some point wasn't there, it, it boils back to money management. Mm -hmm. And that high honor that you're talking about, it's not that they didn't have enough money, but were they saving? Were they investing? What kind of investment? So we've got to start our positive uh, conversation about money by reflecting because some of most of the time most of us don't take time to reflect on where we are financially and how did we get there and i've said this Susan, because even on my facebook lives i tell people i built personal development to a certain extent and the first six years were exciting cash flow not profit cash flow of about a hundred million a hundred million kenya shillings which is a million dollars but then because of what I'm saying, just being caught up in the busyness of the business, you're just paying salaries, you're not sitting to reflect. I woke up one day and there was no money in the bank even to pay staff. I had to pack my bags from Karen and go back to Eastland. It basically means I had to restart my life. And I realized for me, my subconscious money story, having worked in the bank, and at entry level, you're told, don't get excited here about money. Person in Yingi, I become a stationary. You know, there's a, there's a part of that subconscious story that I carried into my business, you know? Ah, yeah. It was then a false narrative. Uh -huh. And it is when I sat at a corner. You know, having moved from the leafy suburbs, having no employees because I couldn't afford to keep them anymore, yes. that I sat down and began a deliberate, you know, examination, self-reflection, 
and giving myself feedback and asking for feedback from those who are close to me and even some of my staff who we had a rapport, like where did I go wrong? So I think right now as people are sitting because of this COVID story, whether you are high and you're a high earner who finds yourself at the bottom or just somebody who was on average income but you've lost your job and you realize you don't even know how to pay house rent the next month, or whether it's Mama Mboga. In fact, you know Mama Mboga has an advantage because they are quickly able to turn around because for them it's survival. They're more adaptable, it's true. When you're surviving day to day to day, you tend to be more adaptable than somebody else who has had consistency. <laughs> Exactly. In fact, I saw one who was selling uh, eggs at Bidurai mm -hmm. and she was giving her story and saying now because of the 7 p.m. curfew, she yeah. could no longer, I mean, there are no customers for eggs in the evening. She quickly, you know, adapted and started selling onions during the day. So sometimes even among the low income earners, it's mm -hmm. very easy to adapt and change. Yes. Well, that may not be possible for middle level managers and high executives yeah yeah that is amazing your personal story is oof, wow you have actually you went through the flip that a lot of people are going through right now because of covid19 yours happened with the world being normal and there's a way we can guide ourselves to be protected no matter what the situation is now yes um you talked about your life being uprooted, turned upside down. You had employees, you didn't have any. You had cash, cash flows and rent and whatever, you didn't have any. You even had to move your house. Now, we have had um, quite a similar and serious situation when it comes to people's homes and where they're living. In Rai and Karibangi, where we've seen people being uh, moved out of their homes late in the night or at odd hours. And because you had such a switch happen in your life, I want to ask, what would you advise them when it comes to money, when you have to start from <sighs> nothing? I would say it's very important to cultivate a positive money mindset even when you have nothing. Maybe just to add in again, Susan, before I got this job in the bank where I worked for 10 years mm -hmm. there's a season in my life i used to walk from westlands to john home and john home to westlands yeah simply because i didn't have about 10 shillings and i couldn't afford even sanitary towels but what kept me going is a subconscious belief and that's why now we come to examining our belief system that i can always make it so like even for the very sad cases in Rai and karibangi my encouragement to them is the fact that you're just alive cultivate gratitude and every day keep your dream ahead of you and that dream could could just be immediate that one day and very soon you'll be settled you may not own the home but at least you won't be like you know in the open air and in the rain as we have seen on tv so just having uh, you know keeping your dream of the next day keeping hope alive in a nutshell i like that that's important um I would also advise them, and I really can tell me if you agree, this is also the time to help those people in need. I think this is also a time for us to share, right? Exactly. We've got to learn to give. I like to use my personal story. One of, when I left the bank and before the business, you know, because I had a mortgage and I had to sell that house that was on mortgage, uh -huh. and now before PDI really before PDI you know, started bringing in the revenue, right. there was a time I couldn't even afford house rent. Right. And guess what? what? A colleague, a former colleague in the bank took me in with my son and my house girl and housed us for three months. And you can imagine the three of us living in her bedroom, one of her bedrooms in an apartment. And what I used to tell my house girl and my son, let's keep hope alive. And we sure did keep hope alive. So I totally agree with you that we need to lend a helping hand. Because when you're helping somebody, either because now they're on 50% pay cut or because they are in the Karyobangi Rui situation where they've been kicked out, remember that person you're helping, you will not help them forever. But they need that help when it's critical. And once they're able to rebuild their lives again, you'll be amazed that they can be, they can be the ones that support you. So later after my colleague housed me, you know, business started picking up. And one time we were able to even take a flight for holiday, even with my house girl. 
she called the whole village in Meru. She said, Nenda kupanda ndege. But so... It's exciting though. It's exciting for her and it was her first time anyway. Yeah. Even to see the Indian Ocean. But what's the point? We must always keep a positive mental attitude. And not just positive thoughts, Susan. That's our first step. The yeah. second step is positive confession. I mean, what you say you become. So even in the midst of the pandemic, what is it that we are saying? We can change our money narratives by keeping a positive narrative in our minds and in our mouths. It's got to be both. I love that. I love that. Love that. And I'm sure you know, uh, even people like the late Steve Jobs had his, uh, you know, share of ups and downs in business. Yeah. But if you look at all those, uh, even, you know, the president of the U.S. Trump, when you read his book, uh, Think Like a Billionaire, yeah. and he tells of the sleepless nights in the boardroom owing billions of dollars, not shillings, huh? Yeah. What <laughs> is it that makes people bounce back? What is it that can make an entrepreneur whose business right now is closed? or that executive who doesn't even know how to go forward. It is having a positive mindset and positive words. I like that. I, I like what you said of you will, you are what you speak. To recognize that you have a scarcity mindset or a negative money mindset, you've got to do an, again an audit of your thought processes and an audit of your words. And most of the time we are not aware. So that. Uh, you can ask people to, to hold you accountable, like yeah. your colleagues mm -hmm. at work, your family members, hold me accountable. What am I always saying about money? Do, am I the kind who says money doesn't grow on tree? When we <laughs> realize we have to change that narrative from our parents because money does grow on tree, but different kinds of trees. For example, Facebook is a tree and money has been able to grow there for months. You know? So we've just got to ask ourselves, Ask people to hold you accountable. Are you always saying, I can't afford that? Instead of asking, how can I afford that? Yeah. And so ask somebody to hold you accountable. And you can also hold yourself accountable. And sort of, you know, I've had to do this to help myself. Keep a little journal. And every time I say something negative about money, because we say in class, in our executive class about money mindset, money has a soul. Just like... How would you feel, Susan, if yeah. your colleagues or your family members kept belittling you and saying negative things about you? Would you want to be close to them? No, I wouldn't. We like to be close to people who tell us we are smart, especially like women, isn't it? Yeah. People who are farmers <laughs> or we are brilliant, we are intelligent. So we've got to check the things we say about money. Mm -hmm. Because let me even throw a spanner into the words. Yeah. Money in itself is not evil, but no. money in the hands of an evil person then takes on an evil agenda or mission. Money in the hands of a good person can feed a child, can house somebody who is out there, uh, you know, homeless. Yeah. You know, it can do so many good things. So we've got to examine what are the things that we say about money. I like that. And I like the direct that, tip that you gave of actually having a journal and writing down when you say something negative about money in your day, it'll just automatically start. You start realizing them as you say them and then therefore you'll change your behavior. So writing them down is like a great tip. Uh, you have talked about exactly. doing, yes, you've talked about doing an audit, a personal audit where you sit with yourself and you're very honest. Now, there are people who don't know where rent is going to come from. Um, there's a lot of people struggling with immediate money that are coming up in the next month or in the next quarter. And currently, they're not quite sure what the COVID-19 situation will mean. So what are the things that somebody should do in that audit when they're sitting and they're thinking, okay, maybe I don't have money for rent, I don't have money for my loan for this, or I don't have money for salaries. What will I do to be able to deal with that situation? It's important to put things on paper or even if you're just going to work on, you, you know, use your phone or something, but list down the bills, list down, you know, the current uh, recurrent expenditure, mm -hmm. list down the debts that you have and list down even other, do you need to call a bank to reschedule your loan or, you know, 
sometimes, most of the time, not sometimes, most of the times people get overwhelmed, Susan, mm -hmm. because everything is at the back of their mind. And how much can your mind hold? And you're being bombarded by other news on COVID and everything else, you know? So why don't you put it on paper so that you can face your reality on paper? So during the audit, and I've had to do that. When I told you I got myself into a financial crisis, I mean, you know, when my business failed, you know, I had to list down all the suppliers that I hadn't paid, the salaries belonging to staff that I hadn't paid, and come up with a plan. And even though the plan didn't work immediately, what it did, it gave me a level of peace so that I'm not carrying all these things mentally. You transfer the burden from your mind to paper. Mm. And that helps you to think clearly. Because right now there are people who are swamped, but they don't even want to face the reality of what is it, you know? I get that. I have a friend of mine who, I have a friend of mine who is a landlord. And he was saying he was amazed at how different tenants reacted. Okay. There are those who reached out to him immediately and mm -hmm. said, guess what? The way COVID is going, I think I'll not be able to pay my rent for six months. And I want us to discuss. Mm -hmm. There are those who kept quiet, assumed that even him, he knows. Even him, he's in this country and he hears the news. You know, where does he think we are paying his rent from? And yeah. didn't reach out, you know? So it, it is how we respond. And I want to use two words. Some people respond and others react. So part of the other thing when you're doing your audit is ask yourself, are you responding to COVID or are you reacting? You know, because responding means you're thinking things through. Reacting is just irrational, you know? Yeah, you have no control in the situation. Exactly. And then it's also a good time to reflect on what investments have we made and to also find out, are you a person that is usually making the wrong investment all the time? And in Kenya, where we have a lot of fraudulent, you know, scams. Yeah. Uh, somebody called me yesterday and said, I want to take up your class because when I look back, I realize I've lost so much money one scam after the other. Mm -hmm. And I had to ask them, you also need to do your emotional audit. Are you led by greed? Because that could be the reason. Quick, fast, exciting money just sounds amazing, but you don't actually go and check and dot your T's and cross your, I mean, cross your T's and dot your I's so you can end up caught in a scam. Exactly. Then the other thing we need to examine as we do our audit is what kind of money information is in your subconscious mind and where did you get it from? The first time I ever made an extra coin besides my bank, uh, you know, my pay slip in the bank is because I had read a book by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yes. And I learned something from that book. And guess what? My colleagues kept saying, you keep reading these motivational books. How do you think they're going to help you? And I said, you know, I have learned that there are four cash flow quadrants. And right now, all my money comes from employment. So guess what I'm going to do I'll start self-employment mm. and I started going to Isili and I'd get very you know fresh you know mangoes and come with fresh fruit juice in the bank and sell it to my colleagues and on the side I started going home every day with a thousand shillings and I realized the information that we have in our mind in our subconscious mind we've got to be deliberate about it if we are going to change our money stories and I started telling myself, if I can make a thousand shillings every day, how can I make 10? How can I make a hundred? And that is how my story changed. I love that. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Irene. Of course, you mentioned the four money quadrants of income. I have to ask you to tell us. <laughs> There's employment, and we all understand what employment is, whether it's formal or informal. Then there's self-employment. Then there's business. And a lot of the time when you say business in Kenya, people confuse that with self-employment. Business must have systems, yeah? Aha, that's different. Like if, you, like if you go to a supermarket, you don't find the owner of the supermarket at the end, you, you know, <laughs> you find the cashiers, you know? <laughs> so that has systems, isn't it? 
Yes, it does. If you go to the bank, you you would find us. When I was working in the bank, you find tellers and other people. You don't find the owners of the bank, right? Yeah. So that's, that's what it means to have a, a business. It's run by systems. So you're not a business owner if you don't have systems. You're self-employed. No. Even if you're a, um, a professional, like a lawyer or a doctor, and when you're unwell, you, you know, you have to close your clinic. Yeah. Or if you attend a funeral, then you're still self-employed. Okay. And there's a time also at PDI, I had a business system, you know, and that's the time I was testing it by traveling out of the country and classes would still run and I would check my bank balances and money was flowing in. But when it all crashed, Susan, and I love to be authentic, yeah. I went back to self-employment where if you needed coaching, I'd have to come sit and with you and coach you myself. So if Irene is unwell, the business is also sick. So we've got <laughs> to examine even in this season, yeah. are we in self-employment but confusing it with business? That is a very good question. It's a very important question. Um, I actually recently started a company, so I can now say for sure that I am self-employed. It is not yet a business. It's not even a <laughs> So you said there is your salary, you're employed. There is yes. self-employment, and then there is business. What is the fourth one? Investment. And that is where now money works for you. For example, if you have, you know, if you if you have money market accounts, you know, shares and stuff like that, you don't keep or even rental houses, you don't keep, whether you sleep or wake up, yeah. you know, money is working for you. Actually, the right phrase is in investment, it is money working for you, as opposed to employment and self-employment where you're working for the for money. The money. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, it's been an amazing conversation, but I'm afraid our time is almost up. So before we close, I have to ask you, um, we're talking about having a positive money mindset. And you're asking tips on how to maintain a positive money mindset if you have one, or how to change your mindset into a positive money mindset. How do you feel having and maintaining a positive money mindset will help me achieve financial security? It will help you because even in such a season that we are in, and even if you look at world history from the Great Depression in the 1930s in America, there are those who always come out of hard economic times mm -hmm. and thrive again. Individuals, yeah. organizations, organizations, and even nations. And I believe those that are able to fail forward or move forward are those with a positive mindset. Because how is it that I've been able to pivot in this a tough time? I'd have sat back and said, oh, this COVID is terrible. And of course, on one hand, it's terrible. Yeah. And people can no longer come for PDI classes. But because I had a positive mindset, I quickly, together with my colleagues, you know, we said, how can we launch our classes online? And that became a turning point for us. So I guess the point of uh, financial security, even just the ability to always create an extra coin, mm -hmm. the extra 1,000 shillings, yeah. is, by, is by keeping a positive uh, mindset. Let me close by giving a real story. The lady who does my makeup, you know, uh -huh. she kept complaining and saying, oh, it's very expensive at the salon now because, you know, they are required to sort of pay a commission and mm -hmm. something. So I told her, how about you coming to my office? Because what I pay you then will be 100% yours to keep. And when she started coming to do my makeup in the office, and I told her, well, when the salon reopens, then you can go back. She yeah. said, oh, wow, that has helped me to just get a thousand shillings for today and I didn't have my futaya mboga leo, you see? Yeah. The fact that you're open to ideas, open to change, you know, is open to feedback. It's not even the big things, it's the little things in the everydayness of life that will keep us moving forward. That is amazing. 
Thank you so much, Irene. You have been amazing. Before we lose you and you go away, could you please share your social media handles? You can find me at Personal Development Institute. We have a Facebook page. And you can also find me at Irene Moradi, my timeline. I am not on Instagram. I am also not on Twitter. And I know I should be. But Facebook has worked for me in the 10 years of business. So I guess I keep saying, if it's not broken, why fix it? I love that. Thank you so much, Irene. You have been amazing. Thanks for the work that you're doing with the Personal Development Institute. So bye-bye. And that was Irene Moravi with all the wisdom with money and mindset. Um, initially, I was quite, um, what's the word I should use? Skeptical on how she could help us maintain a money mindset when COVID just seems to be taking everything away. But thank you so much, Irene. I love what you had to say about having a positive narrative in your head about money is what keeps you open up and excited for new ideas. And most likely that new money will be coming in that new way. Keep using the hashtag KTN Life and Style talking to us. Talk to me on Instagram using my tag at Surakarman. Twitter is at Suranjarogi underscore. And like I said today, keeping a positive narrative about money keeps your mind open and ready. All the new ideas that are gonna bring great money in. That is Surakats. So that's what I got from Irene today. I'm gonna hand over now to Laura and Nixie who are gonna take us through the rest of the show. <laughs>